My name is James Williams Jr. And this is Comfort We Have with number two. It is Saturday. It is 11.39 p.m. A.M., excuse me. <laughs> it's not noon yet. Clearly, I haven't had my sugar today. Um, this video is not for children. This video has racist overtones, undertones. It's just straight about racist profiling and shit like that. And it's going to touch on some topics that um, children really should know, but you should not let them learn through this video. It would be something that you should probably sit down and talk to your children face to face, eye to eye. And, um, you know, this isn't by any means going to be pleasant. All right. So let's begin. We're going to talk about the topic of racial profiling. All right. Yeah, this is going to be a fun topic for all of you who have never been racially profiled. All right. Now, I know you're all thinking, but James, you don't look black. Well, here's a phrase that everybody of color knows. And if you don't know this and you're of color, then you've been living under that same rock that I thought I was living under, but I'm not because I still know this phrase because I'm one of the people that came up with it. If your skin is brown, your ass is going down. You don't have to be black to get the hell beat out of you. All right? Because just like everyone else knows, racial profiling is more extended to people of color, specifically people who are darker than me. Because I'm actually up here. You can see the difference. I'm fairly light. So, like I said, um, black people, we have a... Uh, different shades of brown all right we have high yellow then we have tan or copper and then we have dark just like maybe more shades than that I just didn't want to get too deep into the racial barriers of colored black people now as for me as you can see I'm very multicultural you know I am part Native American I am part white and I'm part black and for the most part, on good days, I am proud of my heritage. On bad days, when black people do something stupid, like going to put toilet water into their roommate's water bottle, causing other black people to have to pay for these penalties that people keep doing, um, then I'm not really proud to be black. I made a video about that dumb university kid that did something. That, you go to university to get a college education. You don't go to cause problems for more black people. All right, and if you're doing this to somebody who was a little bit lighter than you, double shame on you. See, a lot of dark-skinned black people think that they have it bad. Well, us half-breed, mixed-breed, mulatto, and light-skinned, high-yellow people, we have it just as bad. We just have it bad from y'all. Here's something that you have to understand. In, in um, racial profiling, it's not just by cops. It's by people of color as well. Other people of race, races, of um, black races have um, racially profiled me, they've racially profiled anybody who's considered like a red bone or a high light or a high yellow or whatever the hell you want to call I don't think you really call us dudes red bones. You call the chicks red bones. Don't ask where that phrase came from. I have no fucking idea. It's been something that has been said before my generation even came into play. So, as a person of color, I have been... Um, ostracized by more black people than white people because most white people kind of don't know what the fuck I am. Um, a lot of black people really don't know what the fuck I am. A lot of Asian people don't know what the fuck I am. Okay, so for clarification, I am a descendant on both sides of two Cherokee grandmothers, a great Cherokee grandmother on my father's side, who just lost her second daughter or third daughter she had four kids maybe five I don't know she had enough damn kids anyway my father's father was black my mother's father was mixed so therefore I'm 1000 percent mutt all right that does not change the fact that I have been the victim of reverse racism it has not changed the fact that I have been a victim of racism or racial profiling in general. And the thing about racial profiling is that it doesn't really sit in with you until it happens to you. Because if you haven't been a victim of this, 
it's like, oh, yeah, that shit doesn't happen. That shit doesn't happen. You guys are just full of delusional shit. No one's racial profiling. Okay. Well, not only have I been racially profiled, I've been cross-gender profiled, too. Now, here's the story that goes behind that. See his little ponytail? Yeah. I actually used to have one a little bit longer. So, in two years, I, I had that damn thing to my shoulders. I had the baddest ponytail ever. And I would have never cut it had Steven Seagal not beat his wife. And people kept calling me Steven Seagal because I knew Kung Fu. And then there was that fact that, like, seven or so alcoholics thought that I was a girl. Even when I had my um, connected gold tee, they thought that I was a girl. I've had guys follow me from the trailway, which is now the Greyhound bus station by the Sacagawea statue, all the way past Gibson stores with cat calls and hey babies and woo, we're fucking tonight and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm like, dude, I am a man. And they're like, yeah, sure you're a man. I'm like, these guys must be drunk as shit. Whatever they're drinking, they need to share that with the world because if I look like a beautiful chick to them, I need some of that. Anyway, so that's the end of that story. But the fact of the matter is that racial profiling isn't just a police thing. It is a black person on black person thing more than you think. And I say this because if you bump into most members of my family, some of us could pass as white people. And, you know, I wish I had their skin color, those lucky bastards. But I have light, light skin tone, so I'm good. You know, you can look at my face and tell that I'm mixed. So, you know, it's um, it's not that bad. Because, you know, I, I'm never really mistaken for black people that much by black people. It's like, are you sure you're one of us? And I'm like, yeah, I should be. My birth certificate says I'm one of you. So the hardest part that I've had in life has been proving to people that I'm actually black. <laughs> Now, there are times where I'm kind of glad that this happens because then, you know, they're like, oh, well, he's, he's, he's a Mexican or he's a Samoan or he's anything but black. And sometimes that works in my favor and sometimes it does not. So, you know, because sometimes you're, when you're with black people who don't know and they're like, okay, what should we say about this guy in our language so we don't think that he speaks English because they think that I'm fucking Mexican. So they'll be speaking English like, y'all do know I do speak English, right? It's like, oh, we thought you were Mexican. It's like, really? I'm not Mexican. But you're some kind of Indian then. It's like, yeah, I'm part Cherokee, but I'm also part black. It's like, sure, you're part black, buddy. Sure, you're part black. Now, before middle school, there was your, 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 your black and white. But that's because no one really knew until my mom came to school. No one. It was like, like that unsaid secret you know, hey, no one needs to know that I'm not black. No one. I've had to prove that I was part black for more than most of my life. And then it started becoming a problem. All right? So when being black started becoming a problem, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Cherokee. You know? But I, I let them know I'm still black. You know? There's, there's no way around it. But racial profiling is a thing. It's not just a police thing. It is an um, universal thing. You know, so... Especially for us half-breeds, because most people don't fucking know. And I'm multicultural, so I can't keep calling myself a half-breed. But when, um, when I, when like, if I go somewhere and, um, they, um, I need to leave a message or anything. And, um, they'd be like, okay, well, how do we, like, if we want to describe you? It's like, oh, just tell them that the half-breed guy came through. It's like, well, that's kind of racist. I say, yeah, but most people, when they describe me, they describe me as the half-breed. <laughs> that's so fucking wrong, isn't it? But yeah, like, um, I've got stories. Oh, God, I've got stories. Um, There's a, a building here. I don't remember what they sell or whatever. I tried to get a stock job when I was healthy, and, um, when I went to fill in the application, there was a lady there who was like, she was black, she was darker than me, and um, I don't know, I don't think she was from America because she had an accent. Um, so I went to sign my application. I swear I told you guys this before, but it was called Tuesday mornings. So I went to sign the application, and I got to the part where it had ethnic background in it, and I went to mark black. And before my pen hit the paper, she looked at me and said, "Are you sure?" I was like, "Ma'am." 
I'm pretty sure I know what my race is. It's like, well, you don't look black. I said, well, that's because I'm not all the way black, but my birth certificate says that I'm black. So I have to put black on my birth certificate. And this isn't the only place that this has happened to me. There has been other places where it's happened to me and people are like, well, aren't you from Hawaii? Aren't you like one of those Polynesian people? And I was like, well, I'm part Cherokee, but I'm not Polynesian. Um, I'm pretty sure that I'm black. My birth certificate says so. I was like, well, what do you normally put? I'd say, I normally put black. It's like, you sure you shouldn't put Pacific Islander? I was like, look, lady, my great grandmother on my daddy's side was a Cherokee Indian. My grandmother on my mother's side is a Cherokee Indian. My daddy's daddy was black, which means my father was black and Indian. So therefore, is it what about your mother? Oh, well, my mom get passed as white. But her mother's Cherokee Indian and her daddy was mixed with black and white. So I put down black. I was like, well, when you were you born? I said, ma'am, I know how old I am. I'm old enough to get a job. I'm old enough to work. Yeah, but when you were born? I was like, I was born in 73. There was no others on when you have a birth certificate. They don't put you down as unknown. They put your ass down as whatever the hell your parents look like when they come through the door. So, since my dad is dark as fuck and my mom is light as fuck, they put my ass down as black. I was born with hot yellow skin. So I got more of my mom's color than my dad's color. Enough said. But as, as as far as ethnic traits go, ethnic traits skip generations. I could have a child that comes out and looks totally black, no matter who I have sex with. Or I could have a child that comes out and grows up to look totally Native American. And with the way my mom looks, I could have a child that comes out solid white. All right? So trust me when I tell you, I'm 100% mixed. So as for racial profiling, those stories that I just told was examples of racial profiling. So it's not just a cop thing. It is a universal thing when people aren't sure what you are to racially profile your ass. All right? It does happen. It really does. Don't think for a New York minute that it does not. I'm James Williams Jr. This is Kung Fu Advocate number two. B, C, and E.